And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you somebody that I recently connected with on LinkedIn, have been following his content and has just, and I have just been incredibly impressed with his, his heart of, of leadership and sharing and, and motivating and inspiring other people. And so I wanted to connect with this guy just because I was, I was inspired by him. And guys, I got none other than Mitch Guys, can you can you hear him clapping for you? What's Mitch? up, everybody? <laughs> I hear Mitch it. I hear Sugg. it loud and clear. Right, Mitch <laughs> Sugg, man, you are a keynote speaker, a leadership coach, and you know, just I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so um, I I am a leadership coach. I help people and organizations go from where they are uh, to where they want to be. And so at the end of the day, my whole goal is to provide leadership solutions to your leadership problems. And I do that through coaching and I also do that through keynote speaking. Um, I have a 2024 lineup gig for a major organization and a few other things like that that I'm working through the process for. Uh, but uh, I'm excited to be here today. I am a dad, I have a daughter that's 12. And I spend a lot of weekends watching A and basketball and coaching and living life to the fullest. So it's a good time. That's awesome. I love it. I love that you're, you know, in your, your occupational world, you're helping people get to that next level. And then in your, your personal world, you're helping your daughter through coaching and, and helping her team get to that next level. So you, that's just, that's why I guess why I was, I became a fan of yours because I could see in your heart is is to help other people get to their next level and you do it in all aspects of your life and i and i i believe that's incredibly impressive and inspiring and that's why i love to connect with these inspiring leaders just to peek behind the curtain and say hey what inspires these inspiring leaders and so mitch i asked you hey yeah. g- give me a couple of things that inspire you you came back with three great topics that we're just going to kind of chat through First one, kind of what we just almost talked about, is helping people find purpose. That's huge. So tell us what yeah. that means to you. Um, man, I, I think we live in a world, over 50% of people are asking themselves this question. How can I add more value or find more purpose with the way that I live my life? Um, you kind of see it with the great resignation that took place after COVID. You see, with a lot of things that happen, people were shifting. And I think a lot of it is because most of us don't really know what that looks like. How can I add more value? How can I add more purpose to the world that I live in? And I I say this often to people, but I I think it rings true uh, for so many. A career is what you get paid to do and a calling is what you're made to do. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think so often that people are stuck in their careers and they're not really living their purpose now don't get me wrong you need a career you you have to survive and you have to make money um but i think so often we get locked in to just that i I am got to get by and i'm at a place in my life where uh, i'm 40 and i think you know what Uh, continuing to live with purpose is just something that has inspired me and i hope inspires other people because uh, if 50 something percent, over 50 percent of people are asking themselves that question, I want to provide a solution to that problem. Mm-hmm. And so for me, walking with purpose, you know, at the beginning of every year, you see this gyms make most of their money <laughs> on the front end of the year. Right. Because they know they're only going to get you for about five weeks at max. Most people leave after the second week but they lock you into that year long contract. Right. And so what it tells me is that every year we set goals, we set priority, we do all of these things. And so many of us stop after two weeks because finding purpose is hard and creating a new you is difficult and creating a better way, a more sustainable way to live is, is difficult for people. And I get it. And so what I do is I come alongside you know, people and organizations and I say, Hey, there's more, you just got to dig down deep in Mm. you and find what that more is. And most people, um, 
believe it or not, aren't willing to dig that deep because that takes more work than they actually intended it or expected it to be. Yeah. Yeah, that is so true. I love how you called it, you know, an occupation is what you get paid to do, but a, a, a what was it? A purpose is what you're called to do. That is, that's, a calling, a calling is what you're made to do. That is so powerful. I had somebody used to share with me one time, a, a occupation again is what you do nine to five, but a vocation becomes what you're passionate about. What's what truly inspires Absolutely. you. And when you can combine those two, Man, you're just, you're living that purpose driven life. And I think that's, I mm -hmm. love where you're headed with that. And I, I knew you resonated with me because we're kind of speaking that same language and that's so powerful. And, you know, another thing kind of comes to mind is we, a lot of people don't want to dig deep. I, I love how you said that to, to find what that purpose is or what that calling is because it's hard. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, I think pain and going deep in something provides vision to your purpose for instance um yeah. i don't know if you know that uh when van gogh painted a starry night mm -hmm. um it's a great picture and an illustration of the very thing that we're talking about you have blue and yellow and beauty and, and all these things there's light in every home in that picture um, except for one place. Um, it's not a home. It's actually a church. Van Gogh was raised by an abusive religious father, and he never saw light because of the church. So everything else was great, but not there. But what most people don't realize is that when Van Gogh painted A Starry Night, uh, he painted it while he was in a mental institution. So I always say, like, Van Gogh gives us this picture of beauty and pain and hurt and agony. And oftentimes our greatest pain produces our best work. And I, I think that that's huge when it comes yeah. to life. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to go through pain. You yeah. have to. And if, if you're not willing to endure that pain, um, that's where I come along or other people that you've probably interviewed come along to help with that process of saying, hey, let me help you. Let me mm -hmm. walk with you. Let me guide you. Let me coach you. Let me take you from the pain that you're in yeah. to where you want to be in the future. So I, I love that that whole idea of the Starry Night because, I mean, they would take Van Gogh out of his room uh -huh. um, and allow him to look at the sunset and paint. And that's where you have that whole idea of that. And then they would take him back to his room. He fought so many mental battles, just like anybody else in our society right now, mm -hmm. fighting mental illness and anxiety. Um, but he turned that into purpose. And I, I love that about that story. Wow. Man, that's incredible. It's like it's like taking this pain. You can either lock it away and, and push it down deep or you can pull the beauty and the opportunity from yeah. it and create something amazing from it. I love that. Now, now, Mitch, the second thing you shared with me and, and I got to brag on you, you're an author and the yeah. book lead well is your book so and you shared this is this inspires you so tell us a little bit about lead well and how that inspires you yeah so um honestly i didn't intend on writing this book um as we talked earlier i had a guy that messaged me and he said hey have you ever thought about writing devotional content uh for people in the workplace um if you follow me enough on LinkedIn or just in life, you'll, you'll realize um, I actually uh, work for a large organization called The Church. Um, and so I, I put together content often for The Church. And um, this guy was like, hey, can you write devotional content for people in the workplace? I said, yeah. Um, I'd never thought of it. And I said, but I'll do it because I'm one of those people. And I just believe this. I don't, I don't say um, when somebody asks me to do something. I'm not like, no, if you, the first time I did a keynote presentation, they're like, Hey, would you be willing to do this? And I was like, sure. I, I had not even know what I was going to talk about. I just like, what do you want me to talk about? And put together everything. So, so that's just who I am. Um, so the book kind of morphed out of what is the average person, um, person in life dealing with when it comes to leadership. So I created a journey. Um, and the first part of the journey is identity. Like, who are we? Um, I think that the most important person you're ever going to lead is yourself. And if you can't lead yourself, you're going to have a hard time leading others. Yeah. Uh, so I started with 
who am I made to be? Like, what is my purpose essentially? Um, and that journey goes from this, it goes from having to go from identity to rest. The end of it is about rest. Ooh. Um, and throughout the whole journey, there's, uh, I have one, I have one part of it called the ups and downs of leadership. I have another part, uh, called, uh, what it looks like to serve, to lead. Um, I have another one about physical fitness um, on there about taking care of yourself. Uh, so it's just this journey of going up and down in the process of what it looks like to know yourself and to rest at the end of the day. And so Lead Well kind of birthed out of this idea of helping leaders lead well. Uh, how yeah. can I get better? And I wanted to create something that wasn't this massive book, but that somebody could pick up in the morning they could read or before they go to bed at night, they could read. It's one page with questions um, that help uh, help you kind of just think through what you're processing. It's not uh, it's the most practical book uh, that you'll probably ever read. There's stories of my childhood in there, stories of my dad, uh, all kinds of things like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, but I, I hope that it helps people in the workplace. Um, a lot of people have resonated with it and I hope that they continue to resonate with it. Oh my gosh. We're going to put the uh, the link to get Mitch's book, Lead Well, in the show notes. So guys, make sure you go go to his website. You can grab it. We'll put the link in the show notes. And, and Mitch, one of the things that really impressed me, what you said was, you said yes to a, an opportunity. And I, and I believe that simply saying yes to an opportunity, even if you don't feel like you're 100% ready for it, when you say yes, you can get ready for it and you, you move forward to, to make it happen. Yeah, I think the best moments are in your life are oftentimes on the other side of a yes. Oh, that's good. And I also think the true it's true for saying no, but I all but really when it comes to saying yes to those moments right. where somebody approaches you and they're like, "Hey, would you be interested in this? I think those moments are what shape you, what mold you, mm -hmm. and what make you who you are. Because, yeah. um, because those moments are attached to, okay, now I've got to prepare. And, and most people think this way. They think I have to be prepared before uh -huh. I get the job or I get the keynote speaking engagement or whatever it may be. And I'm the opposite. I'll, I'll go, yeah, let's do it. Then I'll prepare myself. There you go. And so in essence, I kind of am always in preparation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that always keeps you moving forward. And I think that's yeah. that's what makes some. And, and like you said, you're leading yourself along the journey, but you're always in preparation mode to be able to say yes to something new. And I think that's yeah. such a valuable lesson. Now, now, Mitch, the third thing you shared with me, and I truly love this one why who you align yourself often determines what you're assigned to. So it's alignment before assignment. So tell us what that means to you and how does that resonate for you? So um, I think that your alignment is crucial to your life. Oh, yeah. And you are the sum total of probably the five people that are around you. Yeah. Um, and some people would say it's even less than that. And so alignment is important. So I always look at it as like, if you're driving a car mm -hmm. and your car is out of alignment, you tend to drift off course of your navigational like destination. And once you start drifting, it's easy to, you know, you could wreck your car. You could, uh -huh. you know, ruin you get a flat tire you could be delayed there's all kinds of things that happen when you start to get out of alignment and so i've just always been this um i've always been this person that thinks this way and i don't know why but i i really believe this that life change takes place in the context of community mm -hmm. and that if you will surround yourself with the right community or the right people then your life will eventually start to change and shift the right way now, it doesn't mean that you put yourself in an echo chamber with people who are always saying yes to what it is that you do. Yeah. What it does mean, though, is that you surround people who care more about you as a person than they do what you provide for other people. And so you've got to be able to connect with people along these lines. This is yeah. important. 
So I, I say this all the time. Uh, alignment will eventually help you fulfill your assignment. And I've got people in my corner right now that believe in what I'm doing, mm-hmm. that, that I'm aligned with, and that push to continue to go after this assignment of keynote speaking, of leading people, of helping people. But they'll also push back when I get out of the line, when I, there you go. When I get out of alignment and say, hey, yeah. I don't know if that's a wise idea. And so it's it's the whole idea, um, you know, it's an old passage of scripture, but it says iron sharpens iron. And I think that that alignment is, is key. And so I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of it. Without it, I would not be where I'm at today. Um, I would not be helping lead a major organization in the DFW Metroplex. I would not be, because here's why. I got hired because of my relationship. Yep. Not because I was the most perfect candidate for the job. Mm -hmm. And because somebody believed in me and saw my abilities and saw what I could bring to the table, they offered me this position. Yeah. So I say all that to say, because of that, now I'm in a place where people are starting to ask me the other day, um, I sold 30 copies of lead well to a nonprofit organization. And they said, Hey, would you come and speak to our team? and encourage us that does not happen without proper alignment because i am in right alignment the other day somebody bought uh 20 copies of lead well to give to their business Uh and that's because of proper alignment and i wouldn't and so because i'm aligned now i'm starting to be assigned to these tasks where i'm helping and i'm connecting and i'm uh bringing opportunity and work yeah. and all these things. And I'm, I'm basically using what we started with my purpose, but uh-huh. that purpose never gets to where it needs to be without alignment. And without alignment, I don't live out assignment and purpose. It's just uh, the way it goes. Yeah. It's so good. And I think because uh, a lot of us tend to isolate and, and, you know, and in scripture, it tells us not to, to isolate, but to ha- like you said, have that community and iron sharpens iron. And, those those accountability partners or alignments will hold you to task. I mean, you give yes. them permission to say, "Hey, listen, if I'm if I'm making a bonehead decision or I'm steering off alignment, you got permission to call me out to to pull me mm-hmm. back and yank me by the scruff of my neck to you know say, "Hey, get it together." And yeah, those alignments are the ones that talk positively about you in rooms that you're not in, and. That's like you said, Mitch, leads to the connections, to the opportunities and assignments, if you will, along the way. Yeah. Well, I, so I, I worked in the medical field um, as a sales rep. Um, I was a drug rep for a while and my alignment with my company got me in the door mm-hmm. because we were a great company. Yeah. It was my job after I got in the door to fulfill my assignment. And my assignment and my task was sell. Yeah. Well, if you put me in a room and let me talk to people, I can sell you on why you should trust me and why you should use our product. But I never would have got there without the alignment. Yep. Proper alignment creates proper assignment. And so it's, it's huge. Oh my gosh, so good. Mitch, man, I could talk to you all day long, but we're, we're right <laughs> at the end of our time. Yeah. It's, it's been such a pleasure to chat with you. You've got so many things that have resonated with me and, it, and it's and it's great to, to connect with you here on the show. But before we wrap up, I want to give you an opportunity to share a closing thought with us. Yeah, um, I think that you're not as bad as you think you are and you're not as as good as you think you are either at the same time. And I think you're probably doing better than you think you are and you're not doing as bad as you think you are. <laughs> so I, I want to encourage people that there's this there's this place somewhere in the middle of that that says, I've got to look at myself in the mirror and say, okay, I'm not as bad. Shame is not, shame does not help us. Yeah. And so I'm not as bad as I think that I am. Um, and I'm, I'm not doing as bad as I think I am, but I'm also not where I want to be. 
And in order to get to where I want to be, I'm going to have to make some decisions. And that first decision is, let me look in the mirror and evaluate me as a person. And I think if we do that, I think that so many people will live lives uh, to the fullest. They'll live with purpose and they'll realize I'm not as bad as I think, but I'm definitely not where I want to be. I'm not as good as I think that I am either. I love that, man. Just check yourself, take a look in the mirror, see, you know, just keep progressing forward and you can do some amazing things. Mitch, thank you so much for being on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Absolutely, man. Guys, y'all go follow Mitch on LinkedIn. He's got some great content. I'm going to put a link to his, I'm going to put a link to his LinkedIn. I'm also going to put a link to his website. I want you guys to go grab his book. Mine is on the way. Watch out for a review of his book on LinkedIn as well. I can't wait to to read it. If it's anything like this conversation, I know it's going to be brilliant. So, Mitch, thank you again. Thank you guys for joining us on the Super Fantastic Exchange, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank y'all. Appreciate you guys.